Welcome to the NHL 94 podcast, part of the CBP Media Network. This podcast is dedicated to the greatest game ever developed, where I will talk about the development of the game, tournaments and matches, our stories about NHL 94, the people that make up the NHL 94 community, the games won, lost, and the chirps that need to be heard around the world. So welcome 16-bit hockey fans to another dynamite edition of the NHL 94 podcast. I'm your host, Len the Legend, and I have to be my best behavior today because I have with me an angry person, and he might just drop the glove. So and if he does, I'm going to turtle like Claude Lemieux. Angry Jay, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I hope I don't have to keep you too honest that we could just keep the gloves on and, and keep this civil. Well, uh, that's my intention. I'll, I'll be a pest, but I can drop the gloves of a terrible fighter. Hence, I <laughs> turtle at every opportunity. So like, I guess the question is, right off the bat, who the heck is Angry Jay? And and why are you so angry? Well, you see, Angry Jay really, he's, he's nobody. He, he was actually a, a friend of mine. He was starting up a band in high school and he go, we need a name. And they're like punk and, you know, and all this, you know, punk stuff. So I was like, well, let's just be angry, angry Jay. That's where they came up with it. And so I was like, okay, that's a pretty cool name. And they need like an email address. I was like, yeah, I'll make up the email address for you. Cause I was in the conversation with them. So I was like, okay, I should make this. And then they never did anything with it. So I was like, well, if I'm going to go online. I don't want to just be me. Cause I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a private person. So it's like, I'll just be this person that has nothing to do with me. And I'll add on my favorite hockey player's number, Doug Gilmore at the end ah. and just run with that. So that's, that's where we're at. I came from so i'm not jay my name's actually greg um so and i'm not you have a cat there too yeah i have a cat he's he likes his attention so he may pop on as a guest uh star with me um from time to time but um yeah that's that's who angry jay is and i just assumed the identity <laughs> it sounds good well if your cat wants to replace me as the host i'm more than willing just to pass off the headphones to your kitty cat and uh maybe he'll do a better job than i it's a he or she I say he he's pretty cute. Yeah, maybe he'll but do a better job than me. Not good so. conversation, definitely not in leading in you know, a podcast. <laughs> so let's not you know put too much pressure on him. It is his first uh, appearance on camera today. He's doing a fine job. Now, I know you said you, you want to be private. There may be some people that just want to learn a little bit more about you because you're kind of a legend in the uh, NHL '94 community. What could you share about yourself in, in terms of how you came into NHL '94 and started playing it? Uh, so. The story is probably fairly similar to a lot of people. My location was just different. So i am been living in California all my life. So I, I, I'm almost 40 years old now. I'm getting there, not quite, but close enough to where I was definitely a part of the Wayne Gretzky expansion and influence. So I think when I was about seven or eight years old, a guy around the corner from me had NHL 92. So we started playing that first and I uh, hit. See, we didn't really know much about hockey. We thought it was too hard to score on the goalie. So he always asked me before the game, it's like, okay, we're, we're going to pull our goalies. This is the only way we can play because otherwise we don't score. So like all our games were like 20 to 16, 22, 18. It was just nuts. You know, it's, and he loved being in Detroit. So first hockey player I learned aside from Wayne Grisky was Steve Eiserman. Oh. Um, so I, I don't know who this guy is, but apparently you love him. So um, it, it, it piqued my interest and I started getting a Sega Genesis just a few months after that. And so like the, one of the first games I rented was NHL 94 because I enjoyed playing that video game. I the San Jose Sharks were pretty new. They were pretty hot. They were like making a playoff push at the same time that I was starting to learn about hockey. So picked up that game and I was like, this is, this is the greatest thing ever. I don't want to play anything else for the most part. So played NHL 94 a lot. Um, kind of didn't talk to that person too much longer after that. So I didn't really have anyone to play the game with. <laughs> So, and there wasn't a lot of hockey fans in California, especially where I was, because it's just like Central Valley. We weren't really that close to the Bay Area or LA. Um, so a lot of a lot of computer games for me versus CPU as I was growing up. I tried NHL '95, tried to trick myself into that being a better game, and I just couldn't get there um, because all those single player functions were actually much more beneficial to me because I didn't have anybody to play with for the most part. I could have occasionally talk someone into playing a couple games and then. You know, they'd lose interest for whatever reason. Um, so I played 94 for probably six, seven years up until I got a PlayStation and kind of moved on to NHL 99. And 
you know, went through college and one day I was just looking at a laptop after, you know, after I drove my friend to his apartment, uh, by his college and just typed an angel 94 randomly into a search engine. I'd never done it before by that point. And I landed on angel 94 online.com mm -hmm. and I'm just completely blown away. There's online leagues, there's information about the game posted, there's forums. I, I was completely blown away. So I got home like at midnight. And first thing I did the next morning was, okay, let's learn more about this. How do I get online? How do I play? Can, can I play just regular games without getting into a season? So that was the start. <laughs> Basically, I've been online playing for 17 years now, on and off. Holy. Um, I, I, I signed on to the forums in 2006 for the first time. So that was... Um, just the beginning, I suppose, and I've never really looked back. It's opened so many doors for me that I, I could have never pictured what, what may have happened after finally getting to play people online and play with another person in this game on a regular basis. It's truly incredible to do that, especially now in you know 2024, and it's relatively easy to do so. You could easily find a game, you go on Discord, and just pop a, a note, uh, pop a message on there, you exit, and people will be DMing you left and right looking to play. It's pretty pretty incredible but i want to take you back almost 30 years when 95 nhl 95 came out i want to hear your thoughts what was it about that particular game that it didn't resonate with you because a lot of other people in my shoes i you know i talked about it negatively at length but i want to hear somebody else's opinion on it so tell me why you didn't like it all too much it, it just doesn't feel the same it's, it's clearly not the same game especially feel wise and the feel of 94 is is everything it, there's so many things that are simple about it but the depth that you can get into it, it it's just unparalleled 95 you don't have that same kind of depth because goalie control is different the goalie takes us more space in the net um so that head game is a little bit different the skating isn't this clean the puck handling isn't this clean the passing isn't as clean um i feel like there's more cheese goals in 95 where you can just go around the net and the goalie gets screened by all of those defensemen and they just kind of it's just chaos on that one post, and then the other side is just wide open. It's just um, the graphics weren't as good. I thought, I mean, they looked sleeker, sure, but they looked kind of awkward, I thought. Whereas 94, everybody just, they, they were more appealing <laughs> blobs, I thought. <laughs> no, that's, that's fair. That's fair. And, it, you know, you share a lot of the same concerns I have. I mean, the, the cheesiness of the goals, um, that... To be honest, it didn't bother me because I didn't play it, I don't think, enough to really get to, into that, that it bothered me. Just You're right. The engine was different. The graphics were different. And in my eyes, it was a regression in the series more than a progression, which is too bad. Now, going back even further, the original NHL 92 that you mentioned that you originally played with your friend, have you picked it up anytime recently? Because I have. And although there are some similarities with NHL 92 and NHL 94, the goalie is so much smaller in 92. I'm not sure if you if you remember that. <laughs> it's kind of an accurate reflection because goalies were smaller in 1992. You could be five foot eight and you could be a goalie. <laughs> if you're five foot eight, you're playing ECHL if you're lucky because these guys are all monsters. But yeah, um, I I really enjoyed 92. I have gone back to it. We actually had a league four or five years ago, I would say, online 92, and it's a really fun game because it's just fast. It's it, it still has that 94 in it at heart, but it's much. It's just a direct. It's a fast game. Um, there's no weight bug, so guys that should yeah. hit actually do hit. And um, there's a lot of posts. It's like Super Nintendo with how many posts there are. It's just, so even if the goalie's not making the saves, you still have two pretty stout posts to, <laughs> to stand <laughs> tall for you, you know, in, the, in those sticky situations. But it actually was just in Japan uh, a few months ago. I went searching for NHL 94 cartridges and uh, – EA hockey cartridges. So it's the Japanese version of an NHL hockey. It's called EA hockey. Um, I did find one copy in Tokyo. It wasn't boxed. It wasn't complete. It's just the cartridge. So I picked that up and uh, hope to just play with that. It has the, all the national teams. So like Poland, and oh. Luxembourg and Spain and Portugal and obviously United States, Canada, USSR, Finland, Sweden, all those, but they have like these goofy countries in there too from Europe. Really? Luxembourg has a team. I don't know about that. <laughs> They're probably from Canadian expats that, you know, they somehow got a Luxembourg citizenship or something. I know the Italian hockey team, at least, it, you know, in years past was like that. But does that, 
is that playable on a North American version of Genesis or is it not? I haven't tried it. I've heard mixed uh, results on the internet that, oh yeah, it depends on like the model maybe you have of the Genesis and it can fit or it won't, the cartridge, you know, won't fit. Um, so I haven't tried it yet, but basically the rosters are all the NHL hockey rosters. They just have certain teams. That you become a country essentially. Yeah. So you still have Gretzky, Robitaille, Samstrom, you know, I think they're Canada or something. And then the rest of the teams are just whatever country I guess would be at, you know, accurate. So you have like San Jose as Luxembourg, for example, because <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. expect much from them. In, in terms of video games, you said you had moved on to uh, computer games. I mean, uh, I'm curious which ones were your favorite would after you, you know, eventually shelved your um, Genesis and your PlayStation, because I'm curious, you know, there, there was been a, a glut of great games for both of us when we grew up I was a few years older than you. And I'm curious to hear which ones piqued your interest and which ones do you like to play? Um, I think I may have misspoken when I said computer games. I've mostly oh. played console games. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I've actually stepped away from a lot of sports games, I'd say, over the last decade because I feel like they were less enjoyable to play. That's why I continue to go back to 94, especially just because of I think they did it right back then. You know, so games I play now, you know, I, I kind of dabble into everything. Like I, I like playing Yakuza. I like playing Final Fantasy. Um, I'll play Devil May Cry. I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes go into Street Fighter and and <laughs> get whooped up in, uh, in <laughs> battles there. But uh, it's just something I enjoy. Um, so I've been trying to stay into more action games and, and, and those type of things. Like I was playing a uh, shot, uh, Hollow Knight for a long time and um, some other games just to keep the, the fingers nimble because at the higher level of 94 you have to have quick reflexes and as we get older it's more difficult to to keep those reflexes around because some of these guys man they're they're nasty out there they they see plays so quick and then they, they make them happen you know in the blink of an eye that it's important to have high dexterity so that's I try to maintain that to a certain level in terms of them perfecting your skills people would, would say you know you might be one of the the best or if not one of the best genesis players out there your, your record your track record certainly speaks for itself what would you suggest for somebody that wants to improve their nhl 94 skills and their ability to play the game what should they do in order to advance to the next level um just watch with with purpose um don't necessarily, if you want to get to the next level, you don't watch to be entertained. Like, oh, that was such a great game. Like, understand why that game was great or what happened at a certain juncture of that game that really changed things and turned it into a great game. So watching people, how they score, how they play defense, how they play goalie, the way they pass the puck, when they pass the puck, and, and, and why. Um, just there's so many aspects of this game to acquire that it can be intimidating. So just try and focus on one thing at a time. You know, whether it's, you know, learning how to break out from your defense more effectively, how to change up your offensive flow and maybe not be so focused on one timers or slap shots, you know, kind of switch things up. Just focus on one thing at a time and get to a place where you feel comfortable that you feel it made progress and then start to cultivate other things in your game. Because if you try to just take on everything at once, it's too much. Mm -hmm. There's too many things to too many nuances to master. Um, so you just have to be patient. You have to play a lot of games. You have to watch a lot of games. And the great thing about this community is that you can ask anybody a question. Um, and try and get more information about, you know, I'm doing this out on the ice, but you seem to be able to handle what I'm doing. Or you, you do this. Why do you do this? And then a person will, will type out an explanation to you. Like, okay, here's what I'm seeing. And, and here's what I would suggest you may look into doing. So yeah, just get involved and, and just kind of use all the resources we have available to us. What would you suggest about playing against a computer? Because a lot of people would initially, I guess, an outsider would maybe scoff at that because somebody may say that you're not going to be able to perfect your skills simply playing the computer over and over again. Do you find there's any value in playing the computer or is it worthwhile just to focus solely on playing another person? There's definitely value in playing the computer because you can learn how the rest of the game interacts with you on it. Um, there's 12 players on the ice when you know there's no penalties you control one so there's 11 players out there reacting to what you're doing and the more you learn about how those other 11 players react to where you're skating when you're making your passes 
while you're holding the puck. You know, if you're using your right wing, you attack down the left wing. If you're going down the center of the right, you know, if you stop up at a certain point in the rink, like if you stop up at the blue line, how does everybody react? If you stop up inside the blue line, how does everybody react? So just learning how the AI interacts with everything else that you're doing, you can anticipate where these guys will be in a game. And then when you go play human, you can go, okay, I've seen this situation similarly before when I played pewter. I'm recreating here. I expect a guy to be in this spot. You may not have to see them on the screen. You can just anticipate like they're going to come from off the screen onto the screen and they're going to be there. And you make that pass and they show up and you just tap in a goal or you make a, a play. It's very rewarding. Um, so there's plenty of value in computer stuff, uh, playing computer only. And then I still play the computer occasionally when I have time. I've been trying to work on my pass shots and I find it as just a <laughs> uh, organic way to try and work pass shots into natural plays. I see a lot of people use safe states. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you get the repetition to where you just, okay, same shot over and over and over and over again. And you, you get better at just the timing and that mechanism. But I prefer to have the the pass shots come up organically in a game. Like, okay, I'm I'm cutting across the defenseman here. I, will, I happen to have a pass shot. Let's try it. And then you just experiment from there. So I'm not hammering away hundreds of pass shots all at once, but I feel like the ones that I'm doing on my own time are more valuable because I can easily just go put that into a game somewhere and go, okay, I've, I've made this move before. I've seen where this defenseman is and how there's an opening and okay, let's try it. And it works or it doesn't. So there, there's, there's so much value in, in playing with the computer. It's got to hurt to be in receiving end of a goal of a pass shot. It, is it not? I mean, when seeing that take place and then all of a sudden your goalie give, I, I, it must be dis- disheartening to have that happen. Right. I mean, Am I am I marking up the wrong tree here? No, you're 100 percent right. I spent so many years online, just sometimes outwardly, you know, sand, sandbagging these things. Like, man, these are just the worst things ever. They break the game. I hate them. They can't react to them. Blah blah blah. After time, you get over that initial. Like, I hate this play, and you, you find ways to how to stop it. I mean, because there are ways to stop it, and or to prevent to even prevent the opportunity from arising. And then you eventually get to the point where you go. You know what? I'm just gonna try him too and see if I can score him and, and make the other guy miserable <laughs> instead of myself. You know, just give him the, the same medicine back. And I'd say it took me about 15 years to be willing to even try pass shots. Oh, holy cow! <laughs> in the last couple look, of years, I've worked him in. <laughs> look at the progression from hating it initially to then trying to defend against it to the point where now it's part of your repertoire. That it's quite a, a progression to where you are in terms of the pass shot. And now, you know. I, again, like I hate when I see that happen, especially giving up a goal like that. Thankfully, I haven't yet, but I would imagine it's gonna it absolutely suck. But I, I, I do have to ask you though a question with creating lines because you've done a lot, a lot of posts, videos, like you know, you've done a lot in terms of creating lines. I'd love to pick your brain initially. Just this is a very broad question. If you could rank the skills from top to bottom, just what is the best skill you think a player should have? If, if they have, you know, if they're top of the class, what would be it? And which, like, if you could rank them, I'm curious what how you'd rank the order of all these skills. Oh, that's that's a great question. Um, well, I would say speed and skating are probably number one because if you can't get to a spot, then you're never going to be able to use the skill that you have. To... Is that agility and speed? Right. So agility and speed, I would probably put it number one. I'd probably put speed first, but agility is right there because agility is very important. Um, second, I'd probably put weight because weight determines what you're able to do with the player, like how you want to play with them. If they're a big, heavy guy, they go down more easily to checks. So you don't want to have the puck on their stick for too long. So it kind of dictates what kind of player you want because if I have a guy that's just stick handling, passing, skating, but he's big, then I'm having to use him in a way that's very difficult for him to be used because he's just very easy to check. If you're very small, you know, if you're a little guy, you don't have to have all these skills. As long as you can skate, you can play defense at the very least. So I, I would say weight is also a big deal. And then you get into the actual skills. So I'd probably go stick handling first, shot power, then passing, then shot accuracy. And then awareness is just like this big unknown fog. <laughs> and we all think, oh, if he has a high offensive awareness, he does this. Or if he has high defensive awareness, 
they just never go play offense. They just sit back in front of them. They're always available for you to take control of, and they're always in good position. Like, we don't know. We we think they may um, help certain things, and then we also learned in the the recent documentary they did on H24 that it's kind of like spheres like of influence. Like they're aware of things from further away, or 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 things like that, or that they make passes to you know people within that sphere. Like there's more people available to pass to accurately. Kind of like that vision cone in Madden 06 that everybody hated. It's like, okay, well, if you put your vision cone on this guy, you're going to make a really nice pass over there. But if you try to pass it the other guy over there, you're, who knows what's going to happen. So you could put awareness anywhere you want because we don't know. But I, I'd go skating, weight, and then your stick skills, shot power. So, And the checking's kind of AI related. It's nice to have. It's not a high priority. Checking is the aggression in terms of how often the computer is going to be checking. Am I correct in that? Right. So if you have Ray Bork, who's the six rated checker or hundred rated checker overall, he's just going to do a lot of checking. Whereas a guy who doesn't really check very much, like Matt Sundin, who's very low check rating, he's not going to be anywhere near as aggressive. Now you said you put a lot of emphasis on speed and agility. Now, Paul Coffey has a heck of a lot of speed. But there's, you know, maybe Lidstrom is has a lot of agility. So which of the two would you rather start, given each of their two attributes? Uh, for a very long time, I would have said Lidstrom because he's lighter. He's easy to handle. He doesn't really get himself into a whole lot of trouble. Excuse me. But he also doesn't create a lot of plays. You give the puck to Paul Coffey, and he's a fourth forward. It opens everything up because then you can just kind of let your – three forwards in computer mode just do whatever they're doing to try and get open and then you have this guy who's just kind of unlocking everything you're attracting defense away from your forwards with the with an extra forward essentially and, and it just kind of opens up these doors he's a little tricky to use because he is a very heavy player but he has excellent skating so he can elude players more easily and he also has high stick handling so he can also shrug off checks more easily when they do connect um, so I would definitely ice Paul Coffey these days. I even bench Lidstrom in, some, in certain matchups because Jason's a perfectly fine defenseman as well. Um, and it, sometimes it's nice to have another guy back there who's heavier to play with uh, Lidstrom based on what the other team has coming forward. So I guess in oh sorry, there's always a lot of things to be you know contemplating when when determining who to ice and, and even where to ice them. So Dallas Drake it would probably be somebody you put in, you slot in as a forward if you're going to be playing coffee is a way to try to I mean, take advantage of the weight bug and uh, just to try to you know keep the other team in check. You have then a checking forward out there that could really lay the lumber, so to speak, when, they did, when the time is needed. You could. You very well could. Um, there's not a lot of forwards for Drake to check, though, in common Detroit matchups at the higher level. Once you get into tournaments where you have you talk about tiers, it's like okay, yes. if you're playing in classic league online, you'll play all the teams in the league. So you may have, you know, larger difference in matchup and quality of teams. When we're talking about tournaments, Dallas Drake might not be as useful because a lot of the teams that he's going up against, he can't really even check those players. So he's kind of useless almost to a point because he doesn't have the offensive skills to carry him if his defense isn't there. And if his, you can't check anybody, then um He's, he's not ideal in a lot of cases, but if you play some against some of the lesser teams, Dallas Drake could be a nice compliment with Paul Coffey, absolutely. Phil Housley, then he must be one of your favorites, given his, his skating and his ability just to lug up the puck from the, from his own end. Yeah, Phil Housley is one of my favorite players. He's he's one of the more perfect players, I think. He's uh, lighter than Coffey, so he's, he skates a little bit better, even though they have the same ratings, because the lighter a player is, the better they skate. Um, he also absorbs more checks. Uh, he, he just doesn't shoot the puck as well, but that's okay. He does everything else really well. I, I'd say he's probably one of my top five favorite players to play within the game. Just he, he does it all. He, he, even if you get stuck up on the other team's goal line and you lose the puck with him, he can still get back on defense. He's like Bobby Orr out there. He he can skate circles around most of the most of the players in the game. Name your top five. You said Halsey's on your, your list of top five. I want to hear what your, who your other four guys are that you like to play with. Uh, definitely Pablo Burr is my favorite player by far. Um, he he does it all, and I think he's underrated. But And, and I'm on an island about Pavel. 
people will put him in their top five, sure, but he's my clear cut number one. It's not even close. And then he can't probably... shoot though. He's just a you know, I mean, in comparison to other guys that you're gonna put in this god tier. He has I think the devil's advocate here. He just he can't shoot. He has the shot power. It's just the accuracy is not quite as good, but I don't care. Like he's going to get so many chances because he's so good at getting the puck back that you're eventually going to score anyways. I think um, I'd probably put Iserman at two, Ronick at three, Housley at four, and then five. I guess McGillney. I mean, McGillney's a lot of fun to use, but he's not very good on defense. It's very difficult to puck, get the puck back with him. So, but he's he's excellent when he has the puck on his stick. I mean. It's hard to argue with that, but that, that'd probably be my top five. Why is he a defensive liability? He's not a very good checker, um, unless it's a very heavy player he's trying to to check. And he's he's so fast and so agile that sometimes using these little minute movements to try and shadow people with, to try and pin him up against the boards or or put him into situations where it's easier to poke check them or perhaps you know something like that. He he's very difficult to to tight to handle in tight windows, whereas um Burray's a little bit easier, I think, because he's a little bit lighter. He can move around a little bit more elegantly in those smaller areas. And then Phil House, he's just a perfect, you know, it's perfect out there. So I love using him for those type of things. Do you agree that the three best goalies in the game are the ones that are ranked the highest, uh, Roy, Belfour, and Fuhrer? If you, are you in agreement with that? Absolutely. And there's a, there's a clear tier break between Belfour and uh, Roy and then Fuhrer. He's definitely a step down. And then another step down would be you know, the rest of the players, Potvin and Joseph and so on. Uh, so rank a few of them. I'm curious, who would you say would be the best, say, two, three, or four of that next group? And um, why would they be, the, why would you rank them that high? Well, I'd probably put Potvin up there. Um, Essence, uh, just trying to run through the goalies real quick in my head. Soderstrom, I would put up there quite a ways. Basically, I want lighter guys because they're easier to use in goalie control. They they stop faster, they start faster. Um, Barrasso's nice in goalie control, like when you just leave him alone because he's pretty solid. But when you try to move around, he's so heavy, it takes him a minute to get started. So when he's trying to shut down that tiny little window in the goal and you got McGillney coming up on you, he, he has a much harder time getting there. Whereas Soderstrom or Essence, they're so light, they can get there. How about so Andy Moog? Moog is great. Um, he's probably another step below... Essence, uh, uh, Soderstrom level, but Moe's, Moe's one of the better manual goalies to use in the game. Absolutely. He, he he's underdrafted, I think. Oh, there, there's a, there's an inside scoop for people that want to know a little bit more about the game. Now I'd love to pick your brain. What makes you absolutely crazy about this game? Something that just drives you nuts. People do, or there's a, something that's part of the game that just drives you absolutely bonkers. I'd love to know what, what it does, like which one it is for you. So first it was EA specials. Those drove me nuts. <laughs> what do you mean EA specials? Uh, the shots for where you just float them up onto the goalie, they rebound, the goalie goes oh. way off into left field, <laughs> and then there's a wide open net. Yeah, yeah. So those okay. those drove me up the wall at, at first. I know a, a good buddy of mine, EA, Eric uh, Eric Anthony, he, he, he came onto the scene the same time I did, 17 years ago. Um. And we played a lot of games early on, and he did EA special. And those drove me up the wall so so fast. I would he would win the game with one of those. I would log out of AIM AOL Instant Messenger, and I'd go <laughs> off to soccer practice or something. Like I gotta go forget this. this is, I can't handle this. Um, and then it was pass shots. Those drove me up the wall too. Um, and then people checking immediately off the face off also drove me up the wall at first because. Oh, I got the puck off the face off. Next thing I know, I'm already on my back because the other guy checked me right away and I lose the puck. So I was like, <laughs> it's just, it, it's not, why did I win the face off? That wasn't beneficial. I wish I would have just gave it to you so I could knock you over. Um, yeah. These days, I don't like goalie dives drive me crazy. People who just dive from their crease and try and get 20 feet out to you. It's like, yeah, that worked, but that's not sustainable over the long term stop doing that it's a risk it's a high uh, high risk uh, um and you can get absolutely you know lit up if you know if the guy goes around you but yeah, you, you <laughs> it, works. Like... it works it's spectacular when it doesn't work because you can just stymie like even a breakaway if you do it right and just you know it, it just... works often enough and you, you sit there you go man that guy just dove on me i 
I feel so silly I didn't score on that because the goal is so wide open over there and I couldn't do anything about it. And then you try to counteract that. It's like, oh, I'm going to just shoot earlier. And then he got just he just stands there. Yeah. Goalie and like, oh, I didn't dive. So, you know, too bad for you. Those EA specials, is there a way to consistently score on with those? I mean, have you, is, I, I haven't played the game enough, I guess, to figure that out, but maybe you could give some, shed some light on this. So is there, like, are you able to, if I ask you right now, give you the puck and uh, this, the controller in your hand, can you do one of those and execute it? More than likely not. I mean, it's not a hundred percent tactic, but it's reliable enough to where I, I use it. <laughs> A lot. I probably use it the most out of anybody in the scene right now. Um, mm. Yeah, I started incorporating those, I'd say, three, four years ago. And I will try them anytime anybody gives me an opportunity to do so. And basically what you want to do is you want to have a good angle on the wing. You want to have a player on his off wing, usually. That helps a lot. You can do backhand EA, float, EA specials, but they're very difficult and much less uh, consistent. Um, what I do is I generally don't hold a direction on the shot. When I release it, I just hit the shoot button and then the puck will bounce off the goalie and then I'll go skate after it and try to not push it in uh, short side to the empty part of the net. And it is fairly, fairly consistent. I can do it from some pretty weird angles, like very quick timing, um, but then a lot of people will use their manual goalie to kind of counteract that. So you have to, that's another head game. That's, that's why this game is so great. That's why I continue to go back to 94 is that, you know, you figure out one thing. It's like, oh, I'll just go try and do something else to react to that and, and build off the game that way. And, you know, you, you, <laughs> it's like a chess match. You can get pretty heady out there. Ever make anybody rage quit? Yes. <laughs> Lay it out. What's the scenario? What happened? Uh, you don't have to name names. Just make, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, no names. Uh, I've had people. It, it happens a lot less now. It used to, back when we were a lot less friendly with each other. Like when we didn't have live tournaments to meet each other at. It was much more. There, there was a lot more, like, ang- I don't know, but like, not anxiety, but like tension between people. It's like, oh, we never have to see each other. We can just be crazy internet people and and be toxic, and. You just do these toxic things in the game, and then people would rage quit and go, you know, on the big thing, and the other guy would just egg them on more, and you turn into a big, <laughs> big kerfuffle on the forums. <laughs> that happens so often. It doesn't happen these this, these days so much. Uh, everything's so chill. Like we've all just gotten into our old man stages where we're just like, yeah, everything's <laughs> cool. You're great. I can't wait to see you in like three months. You can do whatever. I don't care because I, I know at the end of the day we could have a beer and shake hands and like everything's great. So there's very few rage quits. And a lot of the people that do that type of thing, they don't last in the community for very long. The people that we have now and the people that come and stay are all very positive people. They're easy to get along with. They, they want to learn. They want to have fun. They want to just play good games. And you know, I, I just, I don't see it a lot. And I try to stay away from playing very, very new people. I want to let them get established first and get, you know, some, some confidence and let them play the game and, and play people in their level and eventually kind of make that progression. Cause that's what I did when I started playing. I didn't go, well, who's the top person on the leaderboard? Let's go after him. I was like, no, no, no. It's like, I pretended it was a ladder. So I started at the bottom rung, paid my dues, learned, went to the next one, paid my dues, learned, and just went up like that. It was a lot quicker to do back then because we were all pretty new to the scene. Uh, you know, back then, 20, 2006, the scene had only been around for a year or two, so it was easier to climb up and learn. And, you know, these days, if I, I feel like if I go out and try and find someone and then do these cheesy EA special pass shots, goalie dives, <laughs> and, and, and terrorize them that, you know, I, I feel like I would have done the community a huge disservice. So, you know, but if they want to, like, have conversations or, you know, ask tips like, Oh, I read your article online. I saw your video. I have questions. Like I'm more than happy to be a, you know, a resource then and, and, and talk, talk to them. And if they even want to play like, Oh, I just want to see, or you know, let's just play a game. Like if they come to me and ask for it, that's, that's one thing. If I go out and find them, that's like, that's a terrible thing to do <laughs> as someone who yeah. wants to be an ambassador. You just ruined my, 
my day because I, I hope I was going to play you today and see if I could hold you to under 25 goals. But I guess that's not going to be the case given, you know, that we've never <laughs> really, I'm kidding. I'm not going to play you. You don't want to play me. It would be the, the well, you know, if, just a, if you asked, we could play and no, I, I'm not, happy to. No, no, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to put you through this the, <laughs> the pain and suffering of that. No, but yeah, no. I mean, you look at this thumb here, the callus I have built up. That's from years and years of playing NHL. No, no I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> are you still doing videos? Because last night I checked on, on your YouTube channel, it's been several years that there's been anything posted on there. I mean, are you doing it? If not, it's where are you doing it? Uh, it's some Doing the videos was something I've, you know, in the back of my head wanting to do. I'm not very technically savvy. So getting those videos that I had, up there was difficult for me even just to begin with. And then I, you know, I, I have um, other things that kind of also occupy my time. And um, I also change jobs uh, into a, a governmental job. So I try not to be online in the video capacity more than I, you know, want even more so. Like I don't mind getting online and, you know, joining a stream or doing this type of uh, event. Like, I feel like the more you, you put yourself out there, the more you can leave yourself open to other things. So I just try to, you know, um, get in these situations where I think it's comfortable, we're like in a group setting and we can just, you know, it's more of a fun thing than me just like talking about it <laughs> to who knows who. <laughs> That's um, fair. No, and yeah. no problem. I, no, so I, I just have to pick your brain on this because I should have asked it earlier. The A pass or A button, you know, when you have the puck and you press the A button, that puck was flying. Have you ever found a way to take advantage of this as an offensive weapon? Or is this, you know, it's just strictly like still just some utilitarian purpose? It's not useless. I've, so a lot of, one of the things I do is I like to experiment with the game, especially with COVID. It gave us so much more time to <laughs> do these sort of things. And I think it was during COVID where I was like, what if I just hit the A button from the neutral zone, like pretend it's a dump it. And what, what happens? How does everybody react? Um, how do, not only just the computer reacts, but how do people react in trying to defend it themselves? So I found that it can be useful. It can be like a nice change up, a change, a change of pace to where just you just chuck it down there. Like if you have, if you're having issues passing the puck in a game, or if you're having issues cracking defense, like they're pushing up on the blue line, they're they're meeting you in the neutral zone to try and take you out, and they're being successful doing that. You, what I could do is dump it in once I cross the cross the red line. And then watch those defenders just go up into nothingness and then watch my forwards skate in because they all skate in at that point. And they usually go to pretty good spots. And, you know, if the defensemen are just gone, then you have all sorts of open ice once you mm. get the puck back. So it can be useful in that type of indirect capacity. I haven't found too many direct passes where the A flip pass will be, you know, beneficial in any sort of way. But I, I think there, there is some use to it kind of just as like a, a change up because you know some a lot of guys don't expect that type of play to happen yeah between not just only that using it on the offensive side of things i find also on defensively at least the people that i play with nobody tends to use the a button to hook or hold or whatever to try to slow people down yeah i think it's a fairly effective way of, of just taking somebody's timing off and just almost shutting down a rush especially if you have a fast guy you just you hold him you continually hold him. it's a pain being on the other side of things but it's effective and do, do people tend to use that on a higher level for um, using the the hold for games when you guys play? You're absolutely right that it can be effective. Well, uh, there is one player who will utilize A button hooks and holds, and that's Whalers might win. He's a fairly high level player. Like he he will occasionally get into the A level, so he's you know he definitely has plenty of skill and he's been around for a while and he's learned a lot of things. And one of the things that he likes to do is try and hook and hold people, and it does throw off the timing. Like I've had guys DM me like this way is guy. He won't stop hooking and holding me. What do I do? How do I get this guy off me? He's bugging the hell out of me with this, with this strategy. And so I talked to them about it. Cause I feel like there's a way around it. Um, you, you just can't skate right into the guy. Cause that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to skate right into him because that's what he's expecting. And he's going to do something about it. And I personally will use the hook and holds myself. I think out of the, most everybody else, I'm probably using it the second or third most. Um, so the, I usually only use it, um, for very specific reasons, but I started using it more once we had the NHL 92 online season because I had a very small team that couldn't check at all. The only thing I could do was sit there and hold people and just make their life miserable until the puck magically flipped off their stick. Which team and did you use, by the way? I'm curious. Montreal. They, they had notoriously lightweight in that game, yeah. 
yeah but they squ- they skate amazing so if yeah. you can a hold these people you know that are attacking your team all of a sudden montreal becomes a, a defensive juggernaut because they can skate and just get in people's way and i noticed 92 that there was a wider radius in which you could hook and hold people than there is in 94 so 90, 92 holds are more effective than 94 but 94 is still effective enough to where you can use it and what i've noticed is like say i go to try and check somebody but they don't go down like they do the little dance move but they still hold on to the puck that means you can't check them again with that same player um, oh i didn't know that yeah you can't check the same player twice in a row with the same guy so somebody else has to hit somebody on anywhere on the ice where you hit you could take that guy and hit somebody else and then you can go back to that guy but that's oh. impractical with how things how fast things occur on the ice so when those situations happen and i don't really have an, another available defensive option or i know that now that the guy can make the play just try and score a goal i'll use the a button to hook and hold that's like my last line of defense where i can't do anything with a b check poke check or a c check body check to do anything about it because the game won't allow me at this point so that's why i'll use the hooks and the holes and because they're still they're very useful in that in that regard what about poke checks so you, you just mentioned it i'm curious is that a strategy you tend to employ or is it something that's just on the back shelf you don't tend to use it all too much i definitely use it a lot especially if players are of similar weight or um yeah especially if they're similar weight because it's difficult to do regular checks or the cb uh, bug checks where you you can actually check with the heavier player you know, to take down a lighter player but um if they're, they're if they're the same exact weight or, or within one of each other i tend to do more puck checks because it's just safer and it also maintains your position better on defense so even if it's a situation where i could body check um it's like a way to hold your ground and not commit your defense in completely because if, if you miss a body check and you miss it the wrong angle they're gone you'll never see that player again and then you have to scramble and, and against some of these other guys if you're scrambling they'll make you pay for it yeah they'll take the, the slightest opportunity to turn it to advantage and that's a goal and then you're you know uh <laughs> That's a really good analysis. Screenshots. Do they mean anything in NHL 94 having a defenseman or a few people in front of the goalie? Does that hinder the ability of the goalie to make a save in any way, shape, or form? It's funny you mention that. So on Super Nintendo, slap shots are harder, but we tend to believe that if there's a screen in front of the goalie or two, that's even better, that slap shots become a higher percentage option in terms of being successful. And then... In Genesis, we're all so packed about the slap shot in general because it's much easier to score with that I don't even think we're paying attention to who's screening or not screening, that, to, to be per- per- perfectly honest. We're all so scared that it's going to go in anyways, regardless, that we're all rushing to play manual goalie to try and stop it you know, via that option. So that's a great question that I don't think we have a good answer to in Sega Genesis especially. I guess it's over time we'll figure that out. And So do you ever notice playing the game, just at least for me, it seems like the game is hard coded in a way to give one team an advantage for a short period of time because there are you know t- times in the game I can't get the puck out, I can't make a pass, there's nothing I could do. Is this? Do you notice this? And is there? Do you think that the game is hard coded in such a way just to give a team an advantage for a brief period of time, or is just something in my head? <laughs> it, it's in all our heads, if, at the very least. Um, I don't know if it's something hard coded. But there are games where you 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 use like let's say you pick Boston. In one game they look amazing. Next game you play exact same way. They look they look fine. They look normal. They they do regular stuff. You pick them up again. You do the same thing. They're god awful. They can't make a pass. They can't skate straight. The goalie can't stop anything. The defensemen are screening the goalie for, for the other team. You just go to the penalty box all game long. Um, guys can't hold on to the puck. You know whatever it is those things definitely happen. I think it's kind of a roll of the dice personally, um, whatever you may get. And you just have to kind of work with whatever, whatever the, the role of the dice is. There's been some games where I've seen a team or I've had a team where it's like, I can't do anything right. Just want this game to be over with. And you, you just try to grind it out. And sometimes it works. A lot of the times it doesn't, but yeah, the, seeing the passes, the passes bounce off your guys' skate or off your guys' stick to somebody else for a quick goal. Those are very frustrating, and it feels like an add up very quickly. Like you can p- dig yourself your own hole 
so quickly and get yourself into a bad place when you see one or two of those happens like oh my team's terrible maybe they aren't but maybe they are we don't know <laughs> that's the scary thing you have to you just kind of almost have to put it out of the back of your mind like okay they stink how do i play with a stinky team the pittsburgh penguins they are i suppose amazing in snes because the weight bug doesn't exist there but in genesis have you found a way to make them to be a viable team just because they have two guys lemieux and yager which they should be world-class players like lemieux is in terms of his stats his attributes but i can't use him he's just too darn heavy and it gets every time somebody sneezes on him he falls down have you found a way to make them actually a viable team to use yes and no um if i had him in a tournament i'd be okay with it because then they're playing against a team in of similar caliber um so it's not so bad if you take them into a league where all teams are available to use and you try to take them against Detroit and Chicago and LA. Oh, that's a nightmare. It, Even it, Vancouver would just destroy them. Even their lightweight uh, guys. Vancouver just... would be terrible because they're so fast. Yeah. Um, there are ways to use Pittsburgh effectively. Yes. Um, a lot of it has to do with Lemieux. You bring in Joe Mullen. Their defense is actually pretty good as is. They're pretty smart. They close down a lot of passing lanes on their own. Barrasso is fairly solid. So, they at least have that part figured out. Um, you could play defense with them. You could try and make the game very, very slow, but scoring with Pittsburgh can be troublesome at times because Yager's not a very good shooter. He's actually a rather poor shooter. He does everything else pretty nicely, um, but he can't shoot. And then they don't really have a puck carrier to bring the puck up the ice effectively um, because Mullen's very slow, even though he's very light and he can possibly carry the puck up the ice. So I find that getting the puck up the ice, creating enough chances to you know, to even get three or four goals against those top teams can be very difficult, but um, they can also be very dangerous because of the Ron, they clearly have, you know, Lemieux, he's the highest rated player in the game. Uh, you get him some space, he's going to take advantage of it. So they're, they're you, you would expect to be able to beat them, but they're very scary when they do get their chances because of Lemieux and Mullen. He's also a good shooter, but like the rest of their forwards all have, a huge list of problems with, attached to him. So it's like, you look at the bench, like, I don't know where to go. I mean, this guy can do this thing, sure, but then, like, he's going to drive me nuts this way. Like, if you put Kevin Stevens out there, okay, well, he doesn't have a ton of shot power, and he's not agile, and he's, he's going to get super easily. <laughs> yeah. So who's better as a team, then, in your opinion, Quebec or Pittsburgh? Seems like they both have their issues. They should be able to, on paper, you know, I've watched them play live those years, and they were fantastic play. That's teams actually the penguins were coming off just two uh back-to-back uh stanley cup wins they got bounced by the islanders that year but nonetheless um who would you rather play with would you play with quebec or, or pittsburgh if you had a choice uh quebec for sure they have more options on the bench so even if you don't like the starters there's other guys that you can put in and they're like okay these guys are still pretty good and they're not as heavy as pittsburgh they're not as slow as pittsburgh i think they're more consistent overall with their skills the defense is not as good, obviously, and the goaltender's not as good, but I feel like they can mix and match their pieces a whole lot better. I um, mean, you, you get Kovalenko, he's a pretty good checker, so you can utilize him some way. You have so many good shooters. Uh, you guys got you got guys that can move the puck. Um, they're just not very fast compared to the Vancouver, Detroit's, you know, that echelon, but Quebec is definitely a scary team. If I had those two options, I'd quickly put Quebec and feel very comfortable about it. That's fair. Curious, what records do you hold, if any? Because I saw, like, on your YouTube channel, you had an unofficial record of the goal differential in Genesis, and I think it was 99 goals. But I know um, that record, I think, has been supplanted. Um, I forget what the number is, but yeah. So, I mean, I'm curious if, if you hold any records that's you know that you could lay claim to and say that, yeah, that's mine, and, and I still own that record. Uh, not officially in terms of most goals scored against the computer. I think it's like 106 or 107 Something now. like that, yeah. Yeah, it used to be 70 or 60, 69 or 70. I forget what it was that Raf had initially. But yeah, we've increased it by 37 goals over the last few years um, just by identifying the trick to pull the goalie, where when you pull the goalie, you have maximum shot accuracy with your with your players on the ice. 
So I didn't know that. So every player has maximum shot accuracy once you pull a goalie. Even Al McInnes or Doug Wilson or whoever has low accuracy, they be, they become a perfect accuracy shooter. Not just 100 overall, perfect. If there's an open space that their shot power can blast by the goalie, they will score. Uh, no questions asked. Where if the goalie is still in the net and you do a slap shot, it'll go all over the place. Sometimes it goes in the net. Sometimes it goes in the middle of the goalie's chest. Sometimes it goes wide. Sometimes it goes high. Sometimes, you know, it can do whatever it wants. It's much more volatile. Whereas if you pull the goalie, it's going to find that spot past the goalie every single time if their shot power can beat that goalie. So that's how we were able to increase our numbers so by so much over over that short amount of time was oh. once we located that trick, it was just became what well, also became a much more boring experience playing the game that way because all you do is you win the face off. You get it to one of your players. You do a slap shot. That's it. That's that's the whole strat. So, right. so does that same advantage also apply to the computer? Because I know if they're two goals down, they'll pull the goalie as long as they have the the puck in the attacking zone. Do they also get that same advantage where they have, it you know, godlike shot accuracy with all their players? I would presume. Um, I I don't know the how the code reads it, but I'm going to assume that yes you would have um, the same accuracy boost for the computer as you would for a human. Oh. Do timeouts or changing goalies do anything in the game? Well, changing goalie usually makes your goalie worse. So <laughs> there's that. Right. The backup <laughs> um, tends to be worse than the starter, but is there a tactical advantage for you actually doing it? it Maybe mentally. You know, you, you go, okay, I know my goalie is going to be bad instead of, well, he should stop this because he's good. So maybe you make better decisions based off of that knowledge. Uh, Timeouts, we don't know if it does anything in non-line change games. I mean, obviously, it Uh restores everybody's endurance in a line change game, but that's useless for our purposes since we very rarely play with line changes on. That's also just kind of a mental thing. It's like a mental reset. Um, Guys will kid like, oh, if you take a timeout, I'm going to take my timeout to counteract your timeout. And (laughs) I don't know if there's anything to that either. So it, it... I think it's more just for take a deep breath, especially in live play where like, okay, things are moving really fast. A couple BS goals. Got it. Got to reframe my, the mindset here. It's kind of like in real life. It just gives you a, a little bit of a breather mentally and try to reset. So it's we're past 50 minutes and I, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time. Respect. We've booked an hour for this. I'm going to send you some rapid fire questions. So hopefully you could uh, give me some answers. So let's, uh, let's dive into that one. Cam Neely, start or bench? Oh, God. Uh, on Boston, bench, but I hate doing it because he's awesome. <laughs> actually, I like. actually learned to like him. Which backup goalie do you prefer to play over to starter? Uh, Berthway over Sidorkwitz in Ottawa. Daniel the Bandit, I think that's it. Yeah, Nick, Nick, Bandit, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Who's better, Randy Wood or Brian Scrudland? Uh, Scrooland. I like Scrooland. He's he's a smart guy. I can't stand Randy Wood. All he does is skate in straight lines. <laughs> but he, you have uh, speed as one of your your top attributes that you love, and he has that in spades. He has it in spades, but his his agility is so low that it counteracts his really high speed, and it's like <laughs> you're a hot mess out there. I can't handle you. <laughs> you gotta if you're skating, you have to actually stop skating when you hit the blue line, and maybe you you won't hit the board. I love playing with Randy <laughs> Wood. He's so much fun. <laughs> Do you prefer off-handed shooters on the wings? Example, do you, do you prefer a left-handed shot on right wing and vice versa on left wing? I don't have a preference, but it depends on who the player is. If he can shoot, I will generally put him in on, on his off wing. If he's more of a puck end like Dale Howard Chuck, I prefer to have him on his natural wing because he'll be more able to utilize his passing and stick handling from there. Most overrated player in a game. Lindros. And you can use whatever criteria you want to consider overrated. If it's over, if it's overrated by overall Lindros for sure, he's he's very difficult to use. If we're talking about draft, Joe Sakic. Why? Why? Why would you consider him overrated? I'm curious your thoughts. Uh, he he just doesn't do anything at a high level. He's not worth his draft pick. I think he's a very good player. I would take him as my second forward, but as a first forward, where you generally have to take him, I don't want him leading my forwards. Most underrated player, and use the same criteria. Uh, in terms of uh, draft position, underrated. Oh, man. I don't even... 
because I feel like we've gotten to a point where we understand who's. I'll, I'll go Brendan Shanahan. I mean, he's like Lindros. They go in a pretty similar spot in the draft, but he's a little bit easier to handle. I think he's a little bit lighter. He still has all those same skills that Lindros has, and uh, I really enjoy using him. Uh, underrated in terms of the game, just overall. Uh, Moog, you look at him, he's a low 60s goalie. Um, you use him, you go, man, this guy's great. I think he can start for me anytime. Hey, he's, I, from what I take, it sounds like a great manual goalie to play with, just given you know, it's so light. Two versus two or five versus five? What's your preference? Uh, five versus five, Genesis two versus two, Super Nintendo. I love two on two Super Nintendo. It's way better than Genesis, personally. Genesis or Super Nintendo? What's your preference? Uh, Genesis. I grew up with Genesis. I came on to Super Nintendo much later. So for Genesis, six button or three button controller? Uh, I prefer the six button just for the fit, but I I did uh, play a couple of live turns with the three button and, and had a good time with it. Uh, I was successful with it. So either works for me. Funniest moment in a game you've ever seen? Something that just made you howl? Uh, probably the the last King of 94, I think, is the moment that comes to mind where uh, Scribe and uh, K is alleged we're playing in the loser final to go to the to go to the the grand final um the uh the penalty shot that they had it's on youtube somewhere that the penalty shot where uh, um, i just remember going i can't believe he dove and got that puck that was insane um and we all the whole room was just like what happened this is crazy we never seen this before this shouldn't work and it it worked cheapest move you've ever seen in nhl 94 pass shots <laughs> fair Thoughts on NHL Rewind? I'm not sure if you even tried it out. I did not try it out. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I kind of stepped away from current gen sports games. I wanted to play Rewind. I really did. Um, but once I learned that there was no online functionality, I didn't think there was much of a point to it because they dropped the ball there. They, yeah, it just seemed like a no-brainer. They ha- everything is set up. They have the Microsoft ecosystem which they could have tapped into it would have been an like, absolute home run that more to, that's a grand slam how did he drop the ball so freaking bad i don't know i mean i get it if you're not in the online team like like i have been all these years and go oh i could just play the computer or play with a friend or my brother or sister or whatever at, at the house but i don't have anybody to play like that at the house like like at a high level so what am i gonna do what, what am, i can beat the goal i can beat the game 20 to 0 i can pull my goal and get it 60 goals what am i gonna do with this you know yeah if you could change anything in nhl 94 just something to improve it what would you do just put 95 features into 94 that's it the game for all of the things that break the game they actually make the game more fun <laughs> and deeper <laughs> and more challenging to play in a positive way, I think. It's not like, oh, man, this game's broken. I can't play it because it just doesn't work. Like The game actually works with everything. Super Nintendo, there's fewer bugs. The game works. Genesis, there's more bugs. The game works. So I don't want to touch it because I've seen people try to touch it in other ways, like, oh, let's reduce the hot and cold effect. Let's make everybody the same every game. And I feel like that also wildly affects the game and maybe makes... I, I personally enjoy those type of versions less than the regular game because we we trick ourselves into thinking, oh, it's going to react a certain way this game, and then it doesn't. And it's like, okay, then why did we bother with something that we all grew up playing and loving and, and spending all our time on? So I would just put 95 features in the 94. I love season. I love being able to trade players, create players, free agents. Like, I created so many players in, like, the 92 expansion sharks. I would put them into the into the game and play with them and like give myself a challenge because or trade for all the crappy players in a season mode and give myself a challenge because that was, you know, just what I had to do back when I was younger and when there wasn't really anybody to actually play the game with. You, you're part of it. The, I don't want to say the wrong part of the country. I mean, it said California is great, but for playing NHL 94 to it, man, there's other parts of the, the continent. You would have just been, you know, right at home if you were there, unfortunately, but it is what it is. What about fighting? Would you like how? Ha- wouldn't you like to have seen fighting in '94? I mean, you you're the, of the vintage. You played the original NHL Hockey '92, and they had it there. They also had it in NHL PA '93. So thoughts of that? I, I think it'd be fun to have as an option. If it was league play, I'd probably leave it off 
but you know, for fun exhibitions or for fun side, you know, tournaments, I think turning it on would be great. It's just, it just takes a little bit more time to play the game is also, you know, it's tougher yeah. these days when our schedule is a little bit tighter or we have, you know, some of these leagues have 40, 50, 60 games in them and then you have playoffs and they can be very time consuming as it is. So, um, I just think having the option to turn it on and off like they did in 93, um, would have been the way to go. So we're up against an hour here. Um, I guess, do you have any last words you want to say? Anything where maybe where people could find you if they have any questions? The floor is yours. Um, I don't necessarily have places where people can find me. Um, aside from the Discord, obviously, if you're on the Discord, you're more than welcome to message me for for just about any reason, um, especially if it's 94 related, but if it's also just other video games or other interests. Like I've had people talk to me about cycling. <laughs> <laughs> on the discord um because I, I do like this cycle so um you know it doesn't always have to be 94 related sometimes it could just be something you know completely different like um but yeah online you can see me i'll join in on some streams for for uh certain leagues we do the cdl draft show for the uh, chaos draft league that we run online was a part of that uh stream just a couple days ago actually so that's where we have 26 players sign up for a league we all draft a team from the default 94 rosters. And then we actually actually also actually have a C league on um, that participates and drafts the teams that the other guys drafted the players for. So it's a big deal. So you can find me on that type of thing as well. And um, just as a final word, like, you know, if you're in 94 can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be something where you're uber competitive at. You can use it just to play at a casual level. You could use it as a hobby. You could use it just to kind of, have time with other people and have a common interest you know you can make it whatever you want it to be i feel like some people they get so involved in like oh i have to be the best i was the best growing up or i was the best in college or whatever it is it it doesn't have to be like that and um there's something here for all of us and some people it takes time to find what it is i mean i i would probably never do a podcast of my own but you're doing it that that's what you're finding here is is part of 94 for you. And there may be other things past that once, you know, you start playing and you, you find that your skill level is rising. There may be other things that open up kind of like, um, you know, just, it could be whatever you want it to be. I, 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 I think we get so focused on very narrow minded things in our lives. That, you know, there's so much here to enjoy and, and to have nostalgic memory memories about. And, um, that would just be my recommendation for everybody. Yeah. The community is, is incredible. And there's a lot that it, could be given a lot to be taken and yeah it's I, I, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it now and everybody's just so very thankful and i also want to thank you angry j93 for coming on the nhl 94 podcast it's been yeah, a great discussion we've been a little bit over an hour so i want to thank you for taking your time to talk about this and maybe we can do this again in the not too distant future if you're okay with that yeah i'd be happy to come back anytime you asked and uh, thank you for having me in this instance and uh i was very happy to, to join you today perfect well With that, keep your stick on the ice and your controller plugged in. Take care.